Kalyani Educational Rhythms proudly presents a series of educational cassettes that will encourage our young listeners to discover for themselves the fascinating world of science. You can experience and understand your daily life through science. Under these series are the following titles. Air, Water, Motion, Light, Sound, Heat, Electricity and Magnetism. Our title today is Magnetism. children these cassettes will enlighten you and we promise you that you'll enjoy the activities and experiments we deal with happy listening and happy learning magnetism in our daily experience we observe that force is usually exerted by one body on another through physical contact. However, some forces such as electrostatic force and gravitational force do not require contact between the bodies. The force of magnetism is one such force. Since the time of the Greeks, men have been aware of lodestones, shiny black stones able to attract small pieces of iron. These stones were fairly common in a city called Magnesia in Asia. This material was called magnetite, named after the place where it was discovered. The word magnet has the same origin, indicating as it does either a natural or a man-made lodestone as well as magnetism, that branch of physics whose purpose is to study the production and behavior of magnets. Magnetite exerts an influence not only on iron but also, though to a lesser extent, on other metals as well. The metals nickel, cobalt and their alloys are quite strongly attracted to it and along with iron they are known as ferromagnetic materials. A number of substances including platinum, aluminium and various gases are subject to a somewhat weaker attraction and are called paramagnetic. By way of contrast, there are yet others such as bismuth, stellonite and water which show a slight tendency to repel magnets and these are known as diamagnetic. Magnets have always been a source of wonder to man. Many people even thought a magnet had a life of its own and believed that it fed on iron fillings. To test this idea, a magnet and some iron fillings with known weights were placed close to each other. After a few days, it was found that neither the weight of the magnet nor that of the fillings had changed. The first person to carefully study and record the properties of magnet was William Gilbert of England. His study took him 17 years and at the end of this he published a book describing its properties. This book, titled The Magnet, disproved many of the superstitions associated with magnetism. A magnet can have different shapes such as a bar, a horseshoe or a needle as in a compass depending on their use. But a magnet always has two ends and it is here that the magnetic properties are located. One end is known as the north pole or positive pole of the magnet and the other end is known as the south pole or negative pole of the magnet. If we bring the like poles of two magnets north by north, they will repel. If we bring the unlike poles together, they will attract. Thus, 
we can say that like poles repel and unlike poles attract the force of interaction diminishes rapidly as they move apart and depends on the substance in which the magnets are immersed being more intense in a diamagnetic medium than in a ferromagnetic or a paramagnetic one the two poles of a magnet can never be separated if we cut a magnet in half two new poles of opposite forces at once appear on the two new ends made by the break and each of the two halves become a new magnet this will go on happening no matter how many times we break a magnet thus infinite division produces many tiny magnets each with its own north and south poles a bar magnet seems to behave as if it is made up of a set of tiny bar magnets one of the most important and useful properties of a magnet is the fact that a freely suspended magnet always comes to rest in the north south direction with the north pole of the magnet pointing towards the north and vice versa this happens because the earth itself behaves like a huge magnet the magnetic south pole of the earth is near its geographic north pole and vice versa since the unlike poles of the two magnets attract therefore the north pole of a freely suspended magnet is attracted towards the earth's magnetic south pole that is its geographical north pole thus this magnet aligns itself in the north south direction this property of magnets was used by the chinese for navigational purposes since it always pointed in the same direction it could be used to guide ships even when the north pointing pole star was not visible even today magnets are utilized for this property and are used in compasses the insides of a magnet can be studied using a very powerful microscope when viewed under such a microscope following a special technique a magnet is found to consist of small regions known as domains each of these domains is a tiny magnet and all these magnets point in the same direction an ordinary piece of iron is also made up of such small magnets or magnetic domains however unlike a magnet in a piece of iron these magnetic domains point in different directions if we bring a magnet close to this piece the small magnets inside the iron piece slowly turn and align themselves in the same direction just as in a magnet as they align themselves in the same direction they reinforce each other's effect this piece of iron thus behaves like a magnet itself with its south pole near the north pole of the magnet it is therefore attracted towards it it is this aligning of the small magnetic domains in ordinary iron objects such as a nail that causes them to be attracted by magnets when the magnet is removed the small magnets inside the nail get jumbled again and the nail loses its magnetic properties such a nail or iron is said to be a temporary magnet however If the magnet is strong enough it can permanently align the small magnets inside the iron piece these small magnets inside will then remain aligned even when the influencing magnet is removed such a piece is called a permanent magnet pieces of iron or steel can be magnetized permanently by repeatedly stroking them with a strong magnet in a systematic manner the magnetic properties of a permanent magnet can be destroyed if we strike it violently with a hammer this hammering destroys the alignment of the small magnets inside and the material is said to be 
demagnetized. Heat can also destroy the magnetic properties of materials by disorienting their domains in a random fashion. Magnets must therefore be handled with great care. In order to retain their properties, they should always be stored in such a way that their opposite poles are joined, preferably through a piece of soft iron. Through a simple technique, we can distinguish between two identical bars of iron, one of which is a permanent magnet and one an ordinary piece of iron. To do this, we should bring a third magnet near these two bars. In the case of the ordinary iron bar, both its tips would be attracted to this magnet. However, one of the tips of the permanent magnet would be repelled. It is therefore repulsion which allows us to distinguish a permanent magnet from an ordinary piece of iron and not attraction. Magnetic field The area within which a magnet makes its present felt is called its magnetic field. In the case of a lodestone, this can be seen very easily by placing over it a thin sheet of card with a scattering of iron fillings. Drum gently on the card with the fingers and the iron fillings, magnetized by the presence of the lodestone, will move and rearrange themselves in a characteristic pattern consisting of a series of arcs joining the two poles. These arcs represent the lines followed by the force exercised by the magnet on the iron particles and are known as the lines of force of the magnetic field. The magnetic field at any point is along the tangent to the line of force at that point. Electric current produces magnetic field. Electricity and magnetism are closely related to each other. An electric current in a wire produces a magnetic field. This can be very easily seen by bringing a compass needle close to the current carrying wire. The needle deflects showing that a magnetic field is produced near the wire. These observations were first made by Hans Christian Ørsted, a Danish scientist, in the year 1820. When the current is stopped, the associated property also vanishes. If the direction of the current is reversed, the lines of force will still remain circular but the directions of the lines will be reversed that is the north pole points in the opposite direction. The direction of the magnetic field due to a straight current may be found by a simple rule known as Maxwell's right hand grip rule. If we imagine that we are holding a current carrying wire in our right hand and the thumb is stretched along the direction of the current, then the curled fingers show the direction of the magnetic field produced by the current. When a long wire is coiled in the shape of a spring so that the turns are closely spaced and insulated from each other, it is called a solenoid. Generally, a wire is coiled over a non-conducting hollow cylindrical tube. An iron rod is often inserted inside the hollow tube. This rod is called the core. The free ends of the solenoid wire are connected to a battery to pass a current in the solenoid. The magnetic field inside the solenoid is almost constant in magnitude and direction. It is along the axis of the solenoid. The direction of the field inside the solenoid may be obtained by Maxwell's right-hand grip rule. The solenoid behaves like a bar magnet for the points outside it. One end of it becomes the North Pole and the other end becomes the South Pole. If we imagine that we are holding the solenoid in the right hand with the fingers curled along the direction of the current, then the direction of the thumb points towards the end where the North Pole is.
The magnet formed by passing an electric current in a solenoid is temporary. If we switch off the current, the magnetic field vanishes and the solenoid is no longer a magnet. Such a magnet which is formed due to an electrical current and which remains a magnet only as long as the current exists is known as an electromagnet. An electromagnet is usually prepared by placing a soft iron core in a solenoid. The strength of an electromagnet depends on A. The current in the solenoid. The larger the current, the stronger the magnet. B. The nature of the core, iron, cobalt, nickel, etc. Increase the strength of the magnet. And C. The number of turns per unit length in the solenoid. The larger the numbers, the more is the strength. Magnetic field affects electric current. If we produce a magnetic field from a magnet and place a current carrying wire in the field, the field exerts a force on the wire. Take an aluminium rod and connect its ends to a switch. Then bring a horseshoe magnet near the wire in such a way that the north pole lies on one side of the wire and the south pole on the other. The line joining the poles should be horizontal and perpendicular to the wire. If this is done, then we will see that the rod is pulled down and the springs are stretched further. Therefore, we can conclude that when a current carrying wire is placed in a magnetic field, a force acts on the wire. The direction of the force depends on the direction of the magnetic field as well as on the direction of the current. The direction of the force on a current carrying wire placed in a magnetic field may be easily obtained by a simple rule known as Fleming's left hand thumb rule suggested by Professor J. A. Fleming of England. Place your left hand in such a way that the forefinger points towards the magnetic field and the second finger towards the current. Now stretch the thumb. It will give the direction of the force on the wire. This rule can be remembered in the following way. The words field, current and movement begin with F, C and M. Therefore, field corresponds to forefinger, current to the second finger and movement of the wire to the thumb. Faraday's experiment of rotation In the year 1821, Michael Faraday conducted an experiment in which he showed that a current carrying wire can be made to rotate under the force of a magnetic field. A small quantity of mercury was taken in a vertical glass tube fitted with corks at the two ends. A bar magnet is inserted into the tube through the lower cork so that one of its poles is slightly above the mercury level. A copper wire is also inserted in the tube through the same cork. The end of this wire inside the tube is dipped into the mercury. The other terminal of the battery is connected to another copper wire which goes into the tube through the upper cork. The end of this wire inside the tube is shaped like a hook. A third copper is suspended through this hook. The other end of the wire is dipped in mercury. When the circuit is complete, a current flows through the suspended wire. The magnetic field due to the magnet exerts a force on the wire and the wire rotates about the magnet. Faraday's experiment shows that it is possible to produce rotational motion from the interaction of magnetic field and current. This is the basis of the working of the electric motor. Electric motor An electric motor is a device which uses electricity to rotate a rod known as the shaft. Anything attached to the shaft also rotates with it. A motor 
converts electrical energy into mechanical energy kinetic energy of the shaft and of anything attached to it a motor has the following components a coil an insulated metallic wire in general a copper wire is tightly wound over a soft iron core to form a coil of a large number of turns the core is called the armature and is fixed on the shaft b magnet strong magnetic north and south poles are permanently fixed facing each other the coil is kept between them and finds itself in a magnetic field directed from the north pole to the south pole c commutation and brushes the true free ends of the coil are connected with two semicircular rings separated slightly from each other these two taken together is called commutator so the function of the commutator is to change the direction of the current after each half rotation and d battery the brushes are connected to a battery which sends a current in the coil when the battery is connected an electric current passes through the coil electric energy is thus converted into mechanical energy there are two types of electric motors direct current motor or dc motor and the alternating current motor or ac motor many common household appliances such as fans tape recorders vcps etc use electric motors electromagnetic induction as we have seen electricity produces magnetism in a moving coil magnetism can also do the reverse electricity can be generated in a moving coil by a magnetic field michael faraday proved that this can happen this process is called electromagnetic induction electromagnetic induction is the opposite of the electrical motor concept thus the relation between the magnetic field the motion of the conductor and the direction of the current is not a left hand rule but a right hand rule in an electric generator which produces current by this concept the core is rotated around brushes and inside the magnetic field with the rotation and the switching at the split rings electrical current is generated with x as a positive and y as a negative poles the current produced is called direct current or dc if two slip rings instead of one are used the current produced will change polarity at every half rotation or alternate in polarity such a current is called a alternating current or ac such electric generators are called dynamos the bicycle dynamo is a dc generator as is a car dynamo ac generators are more common in industry and electrical substations did you know that the earth is a magnet the earth has a magnetic field which originates primarily within the earth's interior although a small part is produced by the planets lunosphere and magnetosphere the geomagnetic field has been measured at many points on the earth's surface and also with aircraft and artificial satellites at points above it these magnetic surveys have revealed in fair detail the distribution of the geomagnetic field on the surface and in the space around the earth they have also demonstrated that the geomagnetic field consists of in addition to the main magnetic field relatively small local fields of various scales that are closely related to the geological structures near the earth's surface for example igneous rocks are much more strongly magnetized than sedimentary rocks therefore 
the geomagnetic field near such igneous rocks bodies as volcanoes is systematically disturbed detailed magnetic surveys can thus identify subterranean magnetized geologic bodies and determine their approximate structures research suggests that movements of the fluid rock in the earth's outer core have resulted in changes in the earth's magnetic field the magnetosphere is a vast region that surrounds the earth it is filled with electrically charged particles or plasmas and electromagnetic radiation the magnetosphere is the site of such phenomena as magnetic storms and auroras and is a gigantic natural generator of about 100 billion watts of power it is produced by the interaction of the planet's magnetic field with the stream of particles coming from the sun other planets with magnetic fields such as mercury jupiter and saturn also have magnetospheres the transient variations of the magnetic field of the earth which may last from a few hours to 10 days are called geomagnetic disturbances or when of sufficient magnitude magnetic storms these variations occur because a part of the magnetic field of the earth originates from complicated electric current systems set up by the interaction between the solar wind and the earth's magnetic field these systems are located on the surface and inside the magnetosphere which surrounds the earth a gusty solar wind generated by solar flares disturbs such electric current systems and also generate new ones any such changes of the external currents give rise to magnetic disturbance fields separate from those produced by the quiet solar wind gilbert's book on magnetism was the first report of connected sustained and confirmed experiments in the history of physics magnetism became a popular study and not only for practical application it could also be used in natural magic the product of perplexing effects by concealed mechanism here are some experiments to confirm that the earth is a giant magnet for the first experiment you will need a a bar magnet b a thread for starters wind one end of the thread several times around the middle of the bar magnet and tie a knot hold the other end of the thread between your fingers so that the magnet hangs freely if suspended like this it should be balanced and remain parallel to the ground second when the magnet comes to rest note the direction in which it points why does the magnet point in a definite direction third move around the room with the suspended magnet and check the direction in which it points each time fourth what happens when you go outside you must have noticed that your magnet comes to rest always pointing in the same direction this happens because your magnet is under the influence of the magnetic field of the earth's magnet compasses which are freely suspended magnetic needles have been used throughout the ages by navigators for finding directions a compass needle always points towards the north pole of the earth's magnet the magnetic poles of the earth are slightly shifted from the geographic north and south poles you can use your compass to find the angle of difference between the magnetic north and the geographic north the north star will tell you where the north is this difference is called variation navigators have to make a correction for this variation of the compass in order to locate their position just think it over 
Does the compass needle always give true directions? What happens inside a steel factory or a place where there's iron ore in the earth? Can you shield your compass from these magnetic fields? And now, some experiments on electromagnets. We know that magnets can be made with other magnets. Can you make a magnet without a magnet? Let's try. You will need A. One big nail B. Two insulated wires One 15 inches and the other 8 inches long C. A 9 volt battery D. Two board pins E. A thick piece of cardboard or wooden block F. A paper clip G. Cello tape H. Pins Bend the paper clip and then put one end of it with a pin on the board. Put the other board pin about one and a half inches away. This makes a simple switch. Then remove one inch of insulation from the ends of the wires. Wind the longer wire around the nail 25 times and tape it in place. After that, connect one end of the wire to one end of the battery. Put the other end of the wire around one of the board pins. Connect the shorter wire to the other end of the battery. Fasten the free end to the second board pin. Press the pins down firmly. Now press the paper clip switch down on the board pin. This turns the switch on. Bring some paper pins near the nail. What do you find? Be careful. Keep the switch on only for a few seconds otherwise it will drain your battery and then release your switch what happens what you just made is an electric current magnet or an electromagnet the battery produces an electric current when this current flows through the wire the nail becomes magnetized so an electric current produces magnetism where are electromagnets used? Electromagnets are found in many things of daily use such as electric bells, loudspeakers, fans, motors and generators. In tape recorders, a magnet is used to record sound onto the tape. Sound is first converted to an electric current which is passed through the recording head. The recording head is a sensitive electromagnet. The tape is made of a magnetic material. When it is passed through the magnetic field of the head, it gets magnetized and records the variation in the current. This information remains stored in the tape for later use. A large electromagnet can be used in a crane for shifting scrap iron. To release the load, the driver has to simply switch off the current to the coils of the electromagnet. An electromagnet can also be used by a doctor to remove steel splinters that may have accidentally got into a person's eye. Friends, now let's make a model railway signal. For this you will need an empty barrel of a ballpoint pen a nail, insulated wire, a 9 watt battery, cello tape, an on off switch, a cardboard box, a 6 inch wooden scale, some colored paper and thread. Fix the barrel of the pen to the cardboard box. Then fix the scale to the cardboard box. Make a flag and pin it to the scale so that it can move easily. Tie a thread to the flag and attach a nail to the other end of the thread. The nail should go in and out of the barrel as the flag goes up and down. Now wrap 100 turns of wire around the tube and connect one end to the battery. Connect the other end of this battery through the switch. Press the switch on and see what happens. The barrel electromagnet will draw the nail towards it and thus raise the flag. Now that you know your magnet, let us have some magnetic fun. 
hit the bull's eye a game to test your aim you will need friends a piece of cardboard a bar magnet five nails and cello tape tape the magnet firmly on the cardboard and hang it from a wall at eye level stand 2 feet away from the wall and take turns to throw the nails so that they stick to the magnet the one who does it in the least number of attempts is the winner and here is another fun experiment to do with a floating doll which is really an anti gravity experiment with for which you need anti gravity equipment such as a bar magnet a paper clip colored paper scissors thread and cello tape make a tiny paper doll and fix it to the clip tie one end of a 5 inch piece of thread to the doll tape the other end of the thread to the table slowly bring the magnet close to the doll and raise it you are not allowed to touch it make the doll stand up how long can you make her float and the new fun experiment is fishing for rolls you will need friends of course sheets of colored paper paper clips scissors a cardboard box a pen or a pencil thread a magnet and a stick make 20 fish from the sheets of colored paper attach a paper clip to each fish on the back of each fish write things that can be acted out such as jump like a kangaroo pretend you're walking on the moon or driving on a crowded road suppose you're a magnet and other challenging things that you would like to act out put all the fish in the cardboard box tie the thread to the magnet attach the other end of the thread to the stick this is your fishing line sit in a circle and keep the fish box in the middle take turns in fishing out a fish if you catch more than one fish take the top one read aloud what is written at the back of the fish and act it out friends i hope you had fun learning about magnetism do try out these experiments i promise you it's great fun there's a lot to learn and an entire world of fascinating discoveries waiting for you to explore all the best bye bye Thank you.